As a do-it-yourself enthusiast, I have fabricated several printed circuit boards at home. I present here a comprehensive, practical, end-to-end -end method of fabricating fine pitch double-sided printed circuit boards using the toner transfer method. The first step is to print the PCB artwork onto standard photo paper. The artwork should be in 1 is to 1 scale with the top mirrored. To economize on photo paper, we start with two pieces which are slightly larger than the PCB. We first print on A4 size paper in draft mode and then fix the photo paper with the shiny side up onto the draft print using 3M tape and then repeat the print in final mode. This gives us prints of the top and bottom layer on A4 paper and photo paper. Next it is important to verify the scale of the print to see that the footprints match the fine pitch devices which we are planning to use. This is done by physically placing the SMD devices on the printout and checking the alignment. Indexing holes placed symmetrically at the four corners of the PCB layout form the basis for alignment of the top and bottom layers. In order to drill these holes exactly, we first fix the draft print of one of the layers using 3M tape onto the double-sided copper clad sheet which has been cut to the required size. Next, we center punch the four hole locations using a student geometry box compass needle. This makes sure that the holes are drilled at exactly the center of the index locations which will ensure accurate alignment of the two layers. We now drill the four holes using a 0.8 mm drill bit which matches the diameter of standard 22 SWG paper pins. The copper clad sheet with the four indexing holes is now ready for cleaning and further processing. We will be using the toner transfer method which requires that both surfaces of the copper clad sheet are as clean as possible. We use a household detergent bar and scrubbing pad to carry out the cleaning. Using the scrubbing pad and detergent, we need to scrub both sides of the copper clad sheet first in one direction and then the cross direction till the copper shines. After this, the copper clad sheet needs to be dried and handled carefully using only the edges so that no fingerprints, grease or other dirt gets onto the copper surface. We should also proceed with the toner transfer soon after cleaning. In this crucial step, we carry out the accurate alignment of the two printed layers. For this step, we need the two laser prints on photo paper, a pencil, four pins, a pair of scissors and 3M tape. First, the prints of the top and bottom layers are kept face to face and then by holding them one over the other, we confirm that the component placements match. We now mark a pencil arrow on both the rear sides so that the prints will match if the arrows are vertical. We carefully pierce pin holes on all the eight index holes. After cutting the prints to size, we pass two paper pins through the diagonally opposite corners of one of the prints from the non-printed side. Using these diagonally placed pins, we align this print with any two diagonal holes drilled earlier on the copper clad sheet. Now place the other print face down onto the copper clad sheet, aligning it using two of the diagonal holes and keeping both the pencil arrows vertical. This portion of the video is running unedited as this is the most crucial portion in aligning the two layers. It is enough to use two of the diagonals. Once two of the diagonals are aligned, you'll find that the top and bottom layers are beautifully aligned. The two prints have now been placed accurately and we need to stick the edges using 3M tape so that they do not move. Stick the 3M tape edgewise on the four sides in such a way that the top and bottom paper get stuck to each other. 
The alignment pins can now be removed and we are ready to transfer the toner from the print to the copper clad sheet. Toner transfer from the laser print to the copper clad sheet is carried out using a domestic steam iron. The aligned print from the earlier step is placed between a fold of white A4 paper. This additional layer of paper helps in the uniform transfer of heat. The steam iron is then set for steam mode and initial ironing carried out on the cloth surface. This makes the iron surface to have a uniform temperature controlled to that of boiling steam. The aligned print is now ironed with a rotary motion using good downward force for about half a minute. It is then turned around and ironed for a further half minute. The toner would now have adhered to the copper surface. Let the heated print and copper clad sheet cool before proceeding with the next step. By immersing the cooled print and copper clad sheet into water, the paper becomes soft and then can be peeled and rubbed off, leaving us with the copper clad sheet with the laser toner masking the areas that we do not want to etch out. Cut off the excess paper and immerse the cooled iron print into a bowl of water. Rub the surface of the paper between thumb and forefinger under the water to help the paper become soggy. Let the paper soak for at least half an hour. After completion of the soaking, we can now remove the extra sheets of white paper from both sides. We now take a knife or blade and scrape off the 3M tape from the edges so that the remaining paper on both sides becomes free. Using thumb and forefinger, we can now gently rub away the paper exposing the copper clad sheet and toner masking the traces. This is to be repeated for both sides till all the paper is removed and the copper becomes clearly visible. Since we are dealing with fine pitch traces, we would observe that the paper is sometimes not removed completely from between them. To clean up these portions, we use a Johnson bud soaked in water to gently rub along the trace directions. This makes sure that all the copper between traces is exposed. This completes the toner transfer and we are now ready to etch the PCB. We use ferric chloride solution as the etchant. Since the fine line PCBs are generally quite compact, it is easy to carry out the etching in a small watertight plastic container. For this step, we use an old jam bottle. Half fill the bottle with water and then add two spoons of anhydrous ferric chloride to this. This quantity of ferric chloride should be sufficient for etching a small board, especially if the excess copper lands are masked. We need to stir the contents well. The solution gets hot, which aids in etching. Put the PCB to be etched into the bottle. Secure the lid firmly and then agitate the bottle. It was raining and the splashes are raindrops, not leakage. This agitation speeds up the etching process and the etching is typically completed in 5 to 7 minutes. In between, we can open the bottle to check the status of the etching process. We need to continue if not fully etched. After the etching is complete, we can remove the PCB from the bottle and observe how both the sides of the PCB look. Save the ferric chloride etchant for further use and wash and dry the PCB for further processing. The next step is to drill the wires and the component holes. Notice that in the dried PCB, the hole locations are not clearly visible because of a thin residual paper layer. To make the hole locations clearly visible, we put a drop of oil on the PCB and spread this out using our fingers. This not only makes things clearly visible, but the oil acts as a lubricant during drilling. Yeah. 
We drill the wires with a 0.5 mm drill bit and the rest of the component holes with a 0.8 mm or larger drill bit as required. This completes the through holes of the double sided PCB. In this step we scrub away the toner covering the PCB tracks. As before we use a scrubbing pad and detergent to scrub both sides so that all the laser printer toner is removed. This leaves us with a double sided PCB with shining copper traces. However, because of the fine pitch of the tracks, there may be a few copper bridges, the removal of which we will tackle in the next step. After completing the etching of the PCBs, drilling and then removal of the laser toner, we are ready to check the boards for any breaks in the tracks or any bridges which might have been created between tracks. Looking at the bottom layer, we see that there are no breaks or bridges, while when we examine the top layer, we notice no breaks but there are 5 small bridges which we need to clear up. The bridges are carefully removed using a sharp craftsman steel knife. After this, the PCB is now ready for population of the components. While populating the PCB, as we cannot carry out through hole plating, the wires are first connected on both sides using a thin wire. The SMD components are then soldered to the board. After checking out the circuitry, a final conformal coating of clear varnish keeps the PCB protected for life. This PCB was used for my USB student scope, details of which are available at my website www.ajoyraman.in. Thank you very much for your attention.